Welcome to Velvet Buffalo. I am Rocky Kitzman. Tonight we're going to be drinking some wine. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome to Sippin' with the Sam. My name's Rocky Kitzman. Tonight I'm joined by Chef Jonna Freilich, Ellie and Andrew, and we're going to be talking about <laughs> wine pairing. So we'll have some tasty food, some tasty wine, and hopefully a good time. All right, so this dish that uh, we're gonna be having, this is one of our newest dishes. It's vegan, it's fun to have some options around here. The college is here, there's a lot of vegans. And it's a little chickpea fritter on the bottom with both red and green harissa sauces, some black lentils, uh, roasted eggplant, grilled zucchini, roasted carrots, all from the Beloit Farmer's Market. And a little uh, like Moroccan apricot dressing. First wine we have with it is Carl Herb's Riesling out of Mosul. So this is a little bit of a sweeter Riesling. Comes from Erzinger Wurzgarten, which means the spice garden, mainly due to the minerality in the soils up there. Uh, gives the wines a little bit of a spicier quality, uh, but you'll get like peach, apricot, and it really balances out the spices in the dish, as you'll notice as we drink it. So it becomes kind of the sweet wine in the beginning, and then as we eat the dish, it kind of balances out with the um, Yeah, because the harissas are both pretty spicy. Mm -hmm. I, I don't know a lot about wine and food, but I would assume that like with a spicier dish, you would want like red because it's stronger, so it would like hold up to it. But you're saying like a white sweet wine actually balances, yeah, balances, balances a lot. Yeah, yeah. yeah, it makes sense. Like mm -hmm. you, like two strong things would probably just fight each other. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And a lot of people I find think that they don't like sweeter, like fruit forward whites, but they're mm -hmm. really great to pair with mm -hmm. a lot of. Um, a lot of foods, especially like spicier foods. Which is one of the fun things about wine pairings, right? It's like both of the things change when you bring Definitely. them together. Yeah. But one of the reasons I was attracted to this restaurant, it just has a very like European, sort of open, airy cafe feel to it. So I thought it'd be nice to offer a classic steak frites on the menu. And our dipping sauce is an aioli that once we, when we're making the bordelais sauce for the steak, which is veal, marrow bones is the base for that. All of the fat that comes off of that, we take that and blend that into the aioli. So you have like the tomato -y and veal marrow fatness that goes into the aioli to dip the fries in, so. Love that. Who doesn't love steak and french fries? Who doesn't? <laughs> Can't go wrong. So the next wine we paired up was the Cerro uh, Petit Verdot out of Argentina. Really nice wine. They actually use this in the master testing for the sommelier course. Instead of doing a Cabernet or anything like that, we decided to go a little off the beaten path. And you know, you can pair steak with Cab every day or Malbec. Uh, it goes really well with that um, aioli, actually. Dig in. Yeah, the tarragon in there really brings out some interesting notes in the wine, we found out. It sort of ties it back into the Bordelais sauce. Like, this dish, for me, is really about the two sauces. Like, the steak and the fries are great, but it's all sort of mm -hmm. brought together by those two different sauces. And then with the wine, it's pretty good. What kind of cut did you say the steak It's is? a bavette. Um, which is like the apron piece on the bottom sirloin. Okay. It's very tender. The muscle fibers are looser than a flank or just a sirloin. Mm -hmm. Typically has some really nice marbling in it too. I love this wine. It's super tasty. The aioli is great. I think it's the tarragon in there that is like, it's more unusual for an aioli. So here we have a Berkshire tomahawk pork chop served with decongo potatoes and yellow onions and spinach. And the spinach that I'm getting right now is from a farm up in Oconomowoc called Brintag Farm. This is an heirloom variety of spinach and it's a vine growing spinach. So it's very beautiful. Like it'll just like, vine, like grow up. On, on vine. We decided to go with two wines just to show that you can do white and red. What I really wanted to showcase is pork especially, um, you're really able to kind of flip-flop that roll sometimes depending on the side components and everything else. So the wine to your left, the white wine, is a Verdicchio out of Marche, Italy, made by Pivalta. Uh, in this case, just really, it's almost sour, almost tart, um, which matches those pickled red onions, uh, the mustard seed and all that. Uh, but then you get kind of the fattiness from the pork chop where that acid comes through and it will all balance out once. It's probably the most revolutionary wine. Um, it's 
from tasting it on its own to with food. The wine on the right, we went back to Italy again, did a Chianti Classico by um, Castellari. Castellari is really cool. Um, you saw the label earlier, it has a nice little bird on there. So they do everything sustainable, but really good wine. High acid again, hitting it with the uh, pickled red onions, that fattiness should cut right through that. We have a lot of shared plate options on the menu, and we started out that way. Um, and I think it's a really fun way to eat. We've recently changed the format of the menu to offer a more traditional dining format too with first courses and then entrees. And so this is definitely one of the larger, you know, a large format entree dish. So, and it's worked out really well. I think people like to share, but sometimes they don't and you just want like your own food, you know? Yeah. Does the spinach not cook down as much as regular spinach? It kind of seems like yeah, that. It doesn't because, yeah, it holds its shape. Um, I don't know if you've eaten it yet, but yeah. it has like a really silky texture to it, which I really love. It's almost reminiscent of okra in some ways, if you've had okra. Yeah. I think the white's nice and the fact that it like resets the palate, mm -hmm. where the red more kind of like runs, keeps it kind yeah. of like, it just matches well. All right, and so for dessert, um, here's our rendition of s'mores, which, but we call it the Black Magic S'mores, and we'll talk about that a little bit more after we taste the wine, because the wine really sort of like explodes the Black Magic component of the s'mores, but it's a, like a chocolate truffle base, hummingbird crackers, some sour Door County cherries, and homemade smoked marshmallow, and some malted caramel. Alongside of it, we have Taylor Flabgate LBB, which is late bottle vintage um, Ruby Port. So late bottle vintage, if you have a vintage wine, it's aged about 20 months. Late bottle vintage, they're talking about four to six years. Basically, it was a good vintage, but they want to extend the maturation time, so um, leave it in the barrel a little bit more so you get a little bit more complexity in the wine. Ruby with chocolate is a way up. Yeah. And then when you add the cherries to it. Yeah, and then the cherries. And then let's taste it. And I want to see if you guys can pick up what like the black magic is in the dessert. Okay. Honestly, like dessert wine and desserts. Yep. Some of the most heavenly pairings. And save, some of them. save room, man. Save room for dessert. <laughs> and then save room in their alcohol Good. consumption to be able to have a little dessert wine because dessert wines are never like huge pours. Is there a bit of like a licorice flavor yes. in the black? Magic. Yeah. <laughs> Definitely pick that up in the, yeah. in the chocolate, right? With yeah. The wine, right? And yeah. then did you taste the wine after it? Right. Yeah. Yeah. Like to me, that black licorice just really like comes forward with the with the pork. Awesome. Well, cheers, guys. Thank you for cheers. coming yeah, out no tonight. Thank you. Thank you, guys. <laughs>